For most of my life, I've lived in Cape Town on the tip of Southern Africa. It's a place that tourists flock to for the pristine beaches, the winelands, the award-winning restaurants, for one of the natural wonders of the world in Table Mountain. It's an area that over the years of filming food shows and getting under the skin of how our food is produced that I've come to know really intimately, or so I thought. One morning I got a phone call from a conservation body that I work with. A farmer had a leopard in a cage in my proverbial backyard. That particular valley we're driving into, we're killing on average about five cats a year. And um, mostly through gin traps or hunting dog packs in that particular area. So today we got this call where a leopard was trapped in a, a cage trap. I hope, Jenny. It's not very big. Yeah. Is that how you can take her? Sure, but to even have this. Okay. We've got a team of six people. We often get in volunteers to assist, and we put collars on the mature cats, uh, which are very sophisticated GPS collars that every couple of hours takes a reading, and we deduce from that movement, um, both spatially and, and in time, what they use as their territory. <laughs> you know. I think you've become a conservationist in 30 seconds, and those 30 seconds happen right now. Well, now we bring her back to life, and she returns to the natural environment, hopefully a bit wiser for the experience, and will not come into contact with humans again, either positive or negative. It was a watershed moment in my life, but as we got out of the valley and back into mobile signal range, we received another phone call. There was a second leopard trapped in the cage in the same valley. This one in much worse shape. This bull smart sees all young. Why, why is it cut? And you say four days long. Saturday morning, so he's now, you know, four the younger. That cut can starve as soon as he now and come over. And say, "Tana can break all this." Oh, who can, who can us the the cut to live right? Ja, maar hij gaat zijn tanden breken en hij ook. Maar hoe langer je om hou en je ook hoe meer schade doen is. Ik kan niet met mij op een afval het doen als een kat iemand. Ja, maar ik kan niet met mij op een afval het leiden. Je verstaat wat ik zeg. Ja. Ik laat ik zijn vrouw dan morgen bij jou. En en als ik je recht kom je ook dan ik jou. Boy, oh boy. It is now ten o'clock in the evening. It's crossing this. Right now, that this is another cat that can be collared, released, and put out there and will survive. Dart at the first leopard, but it looks like it's really hit its face up against the cage and got a bit of blood and stuff there, which um, Robert's going to have to look at, obviously. Two leopards in my arms in one day, and I didn't even know that they were there. And even worse, I was quickly discovering that there was a dark side to putting food on my table. And in this valley, I'd just been exposed to the conflict between farmers protecting their livelihood and the apex predators that belong there. The sad story, though, is that normally the leopard dies? Oh, there we go. Oh, Keep it there. Far behind the leg. <gasps> so the creature must be exhausted. Mm. Oh, oh this is savage, man. This is f***ing barbaric. Oh, yes. oh. That's the whole pool. Okay. It looks like the whole pool. I definitely don't have the heart. <laughs> what? So let's see how and I had to ask myself, does it have to be like this? And the truth is, is that it doesn't. Cape Town 350 years ago was home to the big five. Rhino, lion, leopard, elephant and buffalo. 
In fact, they were feared by colonists and indigenous tribes alike. But if you fast forward to 2015, you are presented with a landscape that, although beautiful, is almost completely devoid of wildlife. The last lion was killed in 1858. The buffalo, the rhino and elephant are now only found in our famed national parks. Yet on the fringes of my proverbial backyard, one of the big five remains. This documentary series tells the story of a survivor and documents the secret lives of the last remaining apex predators on the tip of Southern Africa and is aimed at starting a conversation about the human wildlife conflict between the farmers who rear the domestic livestock that we eat, the scientists and organizations that are trying to protect them, the urban dwellers that are unaware that they even exist, and the animals with no voice. My hope? To provide a rare glimpse of a largely solitary and highly endangered predator that continues to live in limbo between the wild and the urban, shedding light on how this animal has survived where all others have not. And I leave you with this last thought. This is not just a local story, but a global one. With seven billion people and counting on the planet, this story is being repeated around the urban environments that we choose as our centers of culture and learning, entertainment and hospitalization, the cities of the world. And if we do nothing, if we continue with the status quo, one day we may find ourselves in a world devoid of birdsong and the leopard's bark. This is my crusade to avoid a regional extinction.